Hello Libra, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul, thank you so much for letting me read for you. If Libra is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Remember to hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. If there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Libra, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. Okay, rumination, right? We've got eight of swords. Uh, you, you have a tendency to be pretty straightforward, pretty blunt, um, pretty uh, decisive, right? Um, you don't typically mince words. You're very direct. Um, I feel like right now you're sort of, you're in this rumination kind of energy. And um, rumination is different than contemplation, right? Uh, rumination is sort of looping back in on itself, like an eight of swords would suggest. Figure eight, right? The lemnus gate, sort of. It's just swirling back in. It's like every um, every effort that we we make to figure something out brings us right back to the beginning, right back to where we started. Okay. So with an eight of swords, there is very often a lot of thought going on, but not a lot of results from all of this thinking. We're not. We're not reaching any new information. We're not reaching any sort of conclusions. We're not coming to any sort of clarity. If anything, all of this looping back and forth is just creating this tangle, this web. It's a big knot of Christmas lights that there's no way we can untangle. Okay. So perhaps we need a different method to get out of this state of things, get some clarity, and move forward. All right. So let's see what we have. Let's see what else is going to come out here. Look at that. We've got the Eon Judgment, Rebirth, Reawakening, the Baptism by Fire. This is the gateway to a new life. I like that card. Uh, and it really, this shows that we're just sort of busting out of this analysis paralysis, right? And we are being reborn, a phoenix from the ashes. Here's the sun card, yes. The Knight of Cups. Princess of Cups and the Four of Swords. Very good. The Four of Swords is a um, a relief from this. Four of Swords is rest. Four of Swords says, I'm not stressed out about anything anymore. I've let go of the tension. You know, um, you probably have a lot of tension in your temples. You know, you probably are someone like me that clenches their jaw very much or holds tension in your jaw and in your shoulders, right? Um, we get stressed out in the mind and we sort of feel it in our bodies, okay? The mental stress, not, not good for us, you know, physically. Um, so the four of sores, I think, is very good because it's just kind of like we're focusing on our breath. Maybe that's a very good exercise for you, okay? That fourfold breath exercise, uh, do it according to your capacity. Ask your doctor, that sort of thing, but... Uh, basically, we're sitting still and we're just trying to breathe in, let's say, for one or two or three seconds. We hold for one or two or three. We breathe out. We breathe in, hold it. We breathe out, hold it. We breathe in and hold it. We breathe out and hold it. Gentle. The idea is for a peacefulness. Do that a few times, right? And you'll see that there's a little bit of tranquility sort of covers you. Okay, and that's sort of, I think, a, a very good practice. Anytime we're stressed out, anytime we're in this rumination kind of energy, let's just breathe and try to let it all go, right? And the doorway is going to open for you. Let's keep going. Let's see what the rest of our cards are. Um, I do feel spirit saying that birds are very important to you. There's some connection with you and birds. Yeah, I don't know what the connection is just yet, but I think... Um, 
I think the air energy is really important for you. The birds, um, maybe the idea of flying, of, of sort of the tranquil, gentle, floating on the breeze kind of energy. Um, I feel that there is, there is a breathing thing for you. And I don't know if you're someone that already has a breathing sort of practice that you do, breathing exercises, or if there's something going on with your with your lungs or with you know, the way that you're you're able to breathe right now, right? So consult your doctor if you have difficulty, obviously, right? I'm not a doctor. Um, but I think that spirit's pointing to the breath in a big way for you. Now we've got a six of a six of swords here, right? So it's kind of like we start with this eight, with this rumination. We learn to just breathe and let it go, calm ourselves down. And guess what? We get a six of swords. We get the answer, the solution, that we see the divine blueprint, the plan, the, the harmony, the resonance reveals itself to us. And we're able to go through this doorway, right? I think this is the doorway through the stressful tangle of thoughts to find the clarity, the harmony, the structure, the order of things, the balance, the beauty of it all, right? And now we've got the Art or Temperance card. We've got a Ten of Wands and the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups is very similar to an Eight of Swords. Um, it's And it really, they come hand in hand. You can't have one without the other because the, the rumination that we do mentally brings about the feelings, you know, and it's, it's unavoidable. It's only here in the West that we really separate the heart and the mind, right? The, uh, the water and the air, the cups and the swords are different elements, different suits of the tarot, right? But in reality, they're interconnected. We can't have feelings without thoughts. We can't have thoughts with some sort of feeling about the thoughts. And when we have those eights, it's kind of self-reinforcing those, those thoughts, right? Um, once we realize that, I think we can use those energies to our advantage, right? Because then the rumination, we're sort of dwelling on these negative things, negative thoughts, produce negative feelings, produce more negative thoughts, more negative feelings, all looping back in on ourselves until we're just tangled up. But if we can switch over to contemplation, imagining forward movement, imagining better things, imagining a life that is, that is progressing in a different way. And those energies reinforce each other. I'm thinking positive thoughts. I get positive feelings. I get more positive thoughts. And now there's a harmony. There's a beauty. There's a, there's a progress here. Contemplation versus rumination. And we've got this divine doorway. Um, so I think the eight of, uh, the Eight of Cups at the end is, is really a necessary energy, right? I feel like this is us um, starting to fill these cups back up. We're getting very confident about what's coming next in your future. What, what is beyond this doorway? This is a divine doorway. So before we do our mystery card, let's select a divine doorway. Um, I don't want to call these oracle cards, I guess. Um, because that, that Eon card that judgment card is a portal to the future. It's a new era of starting for you. It really is a, a jackpot energy, right? It really is a phoenix rising from the ashes. Um, it really is a, a transportation or teleportation to a higher plane. It is a leveling up, right? Divine doorway card, change beckons. The path is shifting. The road leads a new way. Do not be alarmed. A change beckons today. Well, that's, I mean, that's it. Get ready, right? Get ready for your, for your big change in your life. I think that this is a fated change. I think that this is going to be, this is going to be your jackpot, right? And um, don't be alarmed. Well, that's kind of what the, the eights are, right? It's just that rumination um, that we just, we don't know. We, we're uncertain. We, we don't know what to do, where to go. I don't know what to make of it. We're just tangled up in all these thoughts, right? Um, but change, change has come. And there are things that we can do, okay? Like the, the breathing, the conscious breathing, right? Let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is 
a random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. This is the factor infinite and unknown. We're going to set it down right over here. We're going to put our little octopus friend, the Eight of Tentacles, right there on top of that. We're not going to look at that card until the very end, but it will tie everything together and it will give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. If you have a prediction for that card, put it in the comments down below. We can do it together as a group exercise. All right. Okay, now, looking around the room, we've got three major arcana energies. We've got the Eon, or Judgment card. We've got the Sun card, and we've got the Art, or Temperance card. Okay. And, um... It kind of feels to me like this, um, the sun is, is you, it represents your soul, right? Going through this fiery doorway where we're going to have to be free from doubt, free from worry, right? Free from anxiety. We're going to have to let a lot of, a lot of things go that no longer serve our needs. Uh, we're going to have to let a lot of these this rumination go, right? And moving through this doorway is going to bring us to the art or temperance card in the position of the environment. I feel like this is a very tense situation for you. I feel like this is high stakes. Very often the art or temperance card is the pressure cooker. And it may feel that you're under tremendous pressure from your environment, okay? And that pressure is sort of, it's gravity that's trying to crush this star, right? Think of a star and think of how the star is, is burning up all this fuel inside to sort of maintain this outward pressure. But then there's gravity that's trying to crush it. So the way of the, the star, the way the star lives is by having an equilibrium between the pressure coming in from outside and the pressure exerted from inside. There's a relative stability there. Too much pressure inside, supernova, right? And too little pressure inside, gravity crushes you. You become a little, what is it, like a little dwarf star or whatever it is, right? So to be sort of functioning at our best level, our highest capacity, becoming the best version of ourselves, is us being able to withstand the pressure from outside with the appropriate amount of pressure coming from within, the, the appropriate amount of effort, of confidence, of forward movement, not too much, not too little, right? The pressure cooker is the feeling that things are getting heavier, things are getting more tense, that the walls are sort of closing in, that the pressure from outside is more than we can handle. Okay, But the sun down here under the surface is you sort of realizing what you're capable of and realizing that this situation is not more than you can handle. Spirit's not going to give you more than you can handle, but spirit will allow you to feel that way until you're able to sort of ignite that fuel inside of you and push back just enough to maintain the equilibrium. Okay, The Sun card represents all of that, but the Sun card is also success, wealth, uh, it is health, it is pride, it's fortune and fame, all of these things, it's gold, right? And I think that this is um, this is how you get your jackpot. This is kind of saying that, look, this situation here, yeah, it may be high stakes, high pressure, you know, pressure cooker kind of um, very challenging situation. But if you, if you step up, this is going to reward you very, very nicely. This is going to be your jackpot. This is going to be your pot of gold. This is going to create tremendous success for you. Not only internally the feeling of accomplishment and pride, you know, um, and confidence, but literally creating the, the success in your physical life, financially, physically, or whatever we're talking about. It's the pressure that creates the diamond, you know. So I like this card. Um, 
We have other fire energy here. We've got water, so certainly do have a lot of water here. And we have one, two, three waters. We have one, two, three air cards. I find that very interesting. Um, we have equal heart and equal mind here, which again, kind of shows that everything is, is connected, that it, they're intertwined. Yeah, and then of course we have the one, two, three major arcana. And we have over here maximum effort with the Ten of Wands, right? So where is this doorway leading to you? What can you see is on the other side of this path for you? Whatever situation you're in, whether it's something at work, at school, um, I kind of feel like you're, you're split between a couple of different options, you know? And there's one option, maybe one path that seems super challenging, you know? that is like a fiery doorway from hell you know excuse my language it's a family show but it's it seems rough right but you can see the rewards on the other side of that you think it's really like high risk high reward you know very challenging grueling but it's if you can do it it's going to change your life it's going to change the world it's going to be you know um just a more abundance than you can imagine. It's going to be the biggest jackpot of your life. The other road um, is a little easier. The other road is you giving in to your perceived limitations and weaknesses and saying, I'm not strong enough to go through this doorway. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't be able to handle the pressure. I don't think I would. I wouldn't last long in that situation. And so we're sort of going a different path, you know. So I feel like there's a couple of different ways that you that you could go. When we're on the path of the dove, this level 10 fire energy is what we don't want. Once we get over here, we realize, hey, that's what we need. So I feel like spirit is sort of, um, you know, this change is beckoning you. Spirit is calling you to this fiery doorway that's going to change your life, that's going to bring you or, or could potentially bring you to that very highest abundance that you could imagine. But it's a decision that you have to make. And this is, this is really saying, yeah, there, I may have faults, I may have weaknesses, I may have flaws, but I'm going to utilize my strengths right now. There are things that I am good at, and those are the powers that I need to summon by my side to get through this situation and get my pot of gold at the end. You know, the weaknesses can't really help you, but they could slow you down. They could hurt you right now. So it's not about really ignoring our weaknesses, but I think it's sometimes focusing on our strengths because those are the qualities we need right now. That's how we get through a difficult situation. If you're, I don't know, if you're in some sort of wilderness survival thing, um, you're not going to try to, um, to, you know, I don't know, repel off of a mountain using your clothes tied together or what, I don't know, whatever, because that's not your skill set. But you are good at building shelters and starting fires and this sort of thing. That, that is your skill set. Okay, now's not the time for you to like, hey, I've always wanted to figure out how to climb a mountain. So, you know, let me just dust off my hands and start climbing the mountain. That's not your skill set. It's not a time for you now to sort of um, work on your weaknesses, you know. Now's the time for you to say, what am I good at? What do I know how to do? What am I going to do? How are, how are my skills and talents going to help me right now? Does that make sense? I feel like you got a, a stomach thing, an indigestion thing going on. I don't know if the sugar's been a problem for you. I feel like there's a um, there's a, a a reduction in the sugar. Like you're trying to maybe stay away from sweets or something like that. Yeah. Um, anyway, the sun I think is the clarity that that tells us or shows us who am I? What am I made of? What skills? What is my skill set right now? What are my strengths and how can I use these to get this pot of gold, this jackpot, to get through this situation and have the very best outcome imaginable? Okay, you got to know what you're, what you're good at there. 
Yeah. And of course, um, you know, we've got this water energy to talk about too, the sort of heart thing. Um, the Knight of, of Cups here, I think that you've been led into this situation by a deeper desire. But now that you're here, the mind is sort of starting to get a little worried and thinking, oh gosh, I don't know if I can do it. So now we're ruminating, right? Now we've had, we, we've been led here. We've heard the call. Our heart is, has sort of said, I want to be here. But now that we're here, it's like, oh, have I made a mistake? Has your heart written a check that your mind doesn't think you can cash, right? And that, it's that old uh, adage, you know? Uh, and it's the heart and mind that sometimes don't get along. It's like the heart tends to get us into things that the mind is like, ah, now I got to deal with it. You know, the heart has the easy job. Whatever it's sort of feeling is saying, that's what I want. Like this card here, it's, um, we're looking at the future and we're thinking, it'd feel good to have that pot of gold. It would feel good to have success in that situation or to achieve that goal or get that job or travel to that place or, or you know, have that big moment have that big win, it would feel great. The knights are always looking at the future, okay? And uh, especially the knight of cups sees a future that feels good. And then it says, okay, mind, figure out how to make it happen. And the mind now is doing this rumination thinking, I don't know, I don't know how to make it happen. And so what you're looking at then is the princess of cups and kind of thinking like, can I compromise? Can I settle for something that I want less? I have other things I want in life. What if I just do that? You know, what if I don't go after this really huge goal and I just take some consolation prizes? What if I just try to find something else that I can maybe distract myself with? Some sort of lesser desire, a lesser aspiration. Did you hear my stomach? I'm so hungry right now. Um, a, a lesser aspiration? Is there a smaller goal that maybe would be easier? May not be as satisfying, but is it something that, is it something that will quiet my hunger down um, a little bit until I can have, you know, a big meal, right? Do I have a little snack somewhere on the table? I don't actually. Um, and I'm more professional than that. I would never eat during a reading. Uh, that's crazy. Um, <clears throat> But maybe there's something here. Maybe there's a point. Maybe there's an idea of um, we have this, this vision of the future that we want, this future satisfaction, right? The, the knights are always looking at the tens, okay? So the knight of cups is looking at the ten of cups and thinking, no, oh, that's going to be nice. Maybe the princess of cups is saying, okay, maybe I can do that, but maybe I have to build myself up. Maybe I have to work my way to that. Maybe I can start smaller right? And figure out what I'm good at now and slowly start easing myself into that kind of a future and come to know myself more and more. Maybe the, the Princess of Cups is saying, I don't really know my skill set. And, you know, maybe my strengths, the things that I am good at, maybe I need to work on them a little bit and start small. You don't automatically, you're in a survival thing, you don't automatically go apply for that show, um, not Survivor, but the one alone. You don't automatically think, I'm going to go compete in that show, that alone wilderness survival show. No, maybe it says, I'm going to go camp in my backyard for a night or two, and I'm going to see what I'm good at. Maybe it's an investigation. Maybe the Princess of Cups is, is trying to find out what is inside of you and what you are good at and what sort of tools you can bring, what kind of strengths you can bring to bear on this bigger picture to conquer this thing, to go through that doorway, to make the decision that says, okay, I'm ready. I know myself, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Four of swords in the future position um, is, uh, is sort of a break from the rumination. Okay. I think that with this idea of conscious breathing, intentional breathing, breath awareness, we're able to see a little bit of who we are. In the midst of all this tangle of wires, you're not going to be able to see what's really going on inside of you, who you really are and what you're capable of. You're not going to see your talents, your skills. 
We may not know what our skill set is. So if we're in this tangle, we may say, well, I'm just going to I'm just going to shoot lower. I'm going to I'm going to aspire to less. I'm going to make my goals and my my accomplishments easier to attain, right? Because I'm just concerned that I, I don't know what I'm doing. I think if we can calm that thinking process down a little bit, if we can bring a little bit of tranquility, okay, I think we'll we'll have a better idea of what what we've got and how we can match the the pressure in the environment. These two cards are very connected. This is the pressure cooker and this is sort of what's inside the pressure cooker exerting an outward force. This is the force trying to crush you, right? The situation itself. This is your energy equalizing that pressure. And that's going to take us over to the path of the serpent. And as we talk about these cards, I would like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's totally free. It doesn't cost anything. I also have another channel, uh, Dove and Serpent Bedtime Stories, where I just do a couple stories a week. It's kind of fun. Go check it out if you want. Your Six of Swords is really kind of the game plan. It's almost the, the, the divine plan revealing itself to you. That you can see, and, and this is a card really of, of skill. This is a card of kind of, of knowing what your strengths are, knowing your skill set, and knowing how you can apply your skill set to this situation and conquer it. You've got that game plan. And of course, you need to be able to improvise. You need to be able to adapt to the variables and the contingencies because um, things will never go according to plan, right? Uh, spirit laughs when when we're down here trying to make plans, you know. And we don't write these in stone. We write them in pencil. Our path through this labyrinth is just sort of sketched in pencil, on paper. We could easily change it if we need to. Because the further we get into this, the more the details of it are going to be revealed to you. The more you explore your environment, the more you're going to have to change the map. Right? The map is not the territory. We want an accurate map, so we're going to bring the map. We're going to change it as we need to. And that's part of the uh, temperance card, too. The idea of strategy. The idea of, you know, realizing that we're going to have to make adjustments along the way as we go. Okay? And that's because... Um, you know, when we're here in the rumination, we may be looking at this pressure cooker as the worst case scenario, as the absolute monster of a challenge. Um, and it may very well be, but we don't know how to deal with it or how to interact with it until we actually get there and see what it is made of. We're trying to see what we're made of, what our skill set is, and we have to know what the actual environment is going to require of us. So we know how these are going to interact, right? What we do know when we get over here is that it's going to require the biggest effort of your life. This is a level 10 effort. Okay. You're going to have to push yourself and it's, it's going to be worth it. This is going to be a jackpot. This is also, you know, the 10 of wands is a card that is reminding us to ask for help, that we're not an island. Okay. Sometimes I mistakenly call this the two of wands. I think, oh, there's a two of wands. Because it is two against the world. Even though the true meaning of this card is our perception of all of the weight on our own shoulders. This is you realizing that you're holding tension. This is you realizing that you're clenching your draw. This is you sort of realizing that we're in this um, rumination state and it's just sort of feeding on itself and it's just getting worse and things things aren't getting better in this in this way so it's going to take a huge effort on your part to get out of this and to get on the path get through that doorway and to keep going 
But there's a reminder here that there are other people around to rely on, that you're part of a larger community, you have friends, family, a support system. Even if you feel as if you are alone, there is someone, something, somewhere for you to reach out to for inspiration, for encouragement, or literally for help. Okay? It's very, it's very important that we realize that. No one is an island. But it doesn't take away the feeling that, hey, this is, you know, this is your life, this is your challenge, you're going to have to muster the energy and step up. Maximum effort here equals maximum reward, maximum satisfaction. And of course, our last card is that Eight of Cups. I feel like it is going to be, um, instead of the feeling of the rumination and things are getting worse and it's sort of feeding on itself and, and, and things are, the water is draining out of these cups. I feel like through this process, we're starting to fill these cups up, that we're starting to feel better about things. We're starting to get more optimistic, more hopeful. Um, you're starting to trust your feelings. You're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. You're starting to see the Ten of Cups in your future as something that is real, something that you're, you're going to get. You can see the jackpot pot of gold uh, over there, and he's thinking, yes, it's real. I can do it. You know, We're getting more and more optimistic now. The hope is returning. Yeah, it's beautiful. Let's look at the mystery card. Maybe... Maybe it'll be that Ten of Cups. Um, what else do we think it could be? I'm thinking Ten of Cups. But it could be some Earth energy because, you know, there isn't any Earth energy here. Because you're in your head. And you're in your feelings. Your heart-mind is just sort of feeding on each other, reinforcing all this negativity where we need to reinforce the positivity and we need then to convert that into action. We know we need level 10 wands, we need level 10 earth, right? Maybe 10 of pentacles. I think it'll be some earth energy anyway. Put your prediction in the comments. Here we go. That's a four of cups. Interesting. Because look what we have here. Now we've got the eight of swords, four of swords. We've got the eight of cups, four of cups. So this is your work right now. Your work isn't to... Um, you know, to head off into this big challenge and and conquer the thing right now. Right, right now, the Spirit's telling you to go through this calming, like calming yourself down, getting out of the rumination and getting into the contemplation. Begin to take these thoughts and turn them into a positive thinking and turn that into energy and turn that into behavior, actions, right? It's a, it's a process. Um, there are stages to it, and the stage right now is four. Four of swords equals four of cups. Slow, steady, conscious thoughts, breath awareness, you know, is going to calm your heart down. It's going to, it's going to relax everything, you know, and in a very real way, this is, this is true. I mean, I've, I've had a, a, a breathing practice for a long time, and depending on how you breathe, um, your thoughts are influenced faster or slower, more complex or more simple, more calm, more clear, right? If your breathing is erratic, your thinking is erratic. I don't know which one comes first, either or, really. If you want to mess with your breathing, start thinking really like fast and erratic thoughts. And you'll notice that your breath starts to get kind of haywire. The opposite is also true. Okay, If you want to have calm, clear thoughts and perception, slow your breathing down and make it very rhythmic and steady and slow and calm. And your mind will become calm too. And then, of course, the heart and mind are together. It is one. There is a tranquility that sort of comes over us, right? Um, and I think that this is really, this is really stage one, is just trying to bring the energy level down to get out of that rumination and just breathe through all the sort of worry, right? We'll start to see things more clearly, and then we'll be able to formulate some 
sort of positive plans, some contemplation, and then we have the energy, the inspiration, and we have the action. I think we're on a we're on a pretty good path here. Okay. Uh, we're going to do an extended reading as well. If you want to stick around, there's a link up top. There's a link down below. New readings for Libra are on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Be sure to watch both readings. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do. It is totally free. It doesn't cost anything. Subscribe also to the Dove and Serpent Bedtime Stories and my wife's Tea Leaf Reading channel. She does Tea Leaf Readings at Ula Tea Leaf Readings. Uh, really marvelous stuff over there. Leave a comment. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you, and I love you, and we're all in this together.